talk to me about growing up uh, Jewish playing baseball in, uh, in Southern California. It was not even a thought in my mind. You guys are, are most of you guys from here? Yeah. How many Jews do you know? <laughs> Throw a rock, it's probably gonna hit one. Yeah. Everyone I played with was Jewish. So it really wasn't something that I would thought was all that crazy. It wasn't until I got into college that things kind of got a little interesting. Well, and I imagine the minor leagues was also then a real well, Some class. places was a downright nightmare. <laughs> uh, I, I played in a lot of interesting places, and uh, it really, I didn't deal with a ton of it because my last name's Decker, so it's not exactly, I mean, you could look at the beard and you could probably guess, but no. quite, quite <laughs> frankly, last name Decker, I didn't deal with a whole bit. The most I dealt with, you, you just uh, you saw in the movie. I was in Frisco, Texas, and, and the reason why those guys knew I was Jewish was because that day, Nate Fryman and I, uh, the day before, we, we both had 20 home runs, 25 home runs at that point of the season, and an article came out saying we were the best Jewish power-hitting combo in the history of baseball. <laughs> but that is not a high benchmark to be at. Well, I don't Because I'm yeah, pretty sure we were the only combination Jewish... <laughs> power hitting duo ever in the history of baseball. So um, those guys got wind of it and just went to town and uh, they had to be escorted from the premises. Mm. That was actually at a game? That was at a game, Frisco, Texas, Texas League in 2012. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess there's nothing to really wake you up to uh, certain realities of this world and getting out of our little bubble here. Yep. Yeah. Um, but. From your perspective on the team, where would you say, in terms of a, a, a spectrum of Jewish awareness and, and, and observance, even growing up, where would you say you fit on a team of 28 players? Probably right in the middle. Uh, I, I mean, I celebrated all the high holidays. Uh, didn't go to school during those days. My mom didn't go to work. My mom's Jewish. Um, but, you know, I always describe it as L.A. Jews That in that... <laughs> This, and this is 100% true, this happened. My grandfather, the most Jewish man I've ever met in my life, he was so proud of his Jewish heritage. It's just, and he made sure he instilled it in everybody, almost to the point where it was frightening. And I remember we had uh, a combination Passover Easter dinner, and he cooked pork chops. <laughs> I was 11, and I knew it was wrong. <laughs> they were good, though. They, they were good. He's a good cook, man. <laughs> Um, and did you see things change for any of the players, uh, you know, over the course of the, the time together, both the trip, and I, I guess not everybody made the trip, but... No, only about seven or eight of us went on the trip, but the good thing that did come out of it was, I was at the time with the Brewers, um, Josh Zide was unsigned, and what they didn't really mention in the movie is how good he really pitched. He pitched 10 innings, scoreless innings. He was a rock star. Uh, and when he came back, he got picked up by the um, St. Louis Cardinals, played that year. Didn't have the best year and uh, hung him up afterwards. Now works for the front, in the front office with the Cubs. Uh, Sam Fold didn't play after that. He retired. He's in the front office with the Phillies. Uh, Nate Fryman retired last year. He's in the front office with the uh, Indians. As you can tell, um, there's a pattern here. That team was literally the only smart baseball team in the history of this game in that everybody left to, when they retired, all had jobs in the front offices or wherever they really wanted. Well, and, and that's a, a big part of what's developing, I guess, with an acceptance of Jewish ballplayers, not to mention you, we now have a, a Jewish manager with Gabe Kapler. Yep, we do have him. We have two of them. Brad Osmus is in Anaheim, that's dude. That's right, that's correct as well. It's kind of a golden age of, of Jewish ballplayers. <laughs> is it? <laughs> the, all of them were in that movie. No. Didn't we have, we had a World Series game where uh, two Jewish ballplayers both had home runs? Yeah, yeah. you Bregman, had Bregman, and, you got Nate, Jock you got Peters, uh, Jock, Peterson. Jock Peterson, who didn't join us in this movie. Uh, he played with us the first time in 2012. He was like 19. Um, out there, you got Max Freed yeah. over with the uh, Braves. And a bunch one of others kind of sprinkled throughout. For, for ERA. Huh? Yeah, Bregman over yeah. in yeah, Houston. Uh, we're, we're sprinkled all over the place. What, what ball players were uh, an, an example for you? I, Jewish ball players or otherwise? I guess. Sean Green. Sean Green. So you, how old were you when Sean, when the Dod was it 13, when the Dodgers 14? signed him or before? Dodgers even? signed him. He came over here from Toronto. Sean Green was. I grew up in. I grew up a massive Dodger fan, and uh, I was like Mike Piazza was my hero. And then he left, 
and I stopped caring for a little bit. And then when Sean Green came back, came out here, I mean, I, I was in love. He, I was I was a fanboy of Sean Green. And then when I got to play with him on the first Team Israel team, you know, he was my teammate. He was hitting behind me. Oh my that God. was awesome. <laughs> and I was just like, how's that feel, man? You finally come back, and a fanboy of yours is hitting in front of you in the lineup. Does that suck? <laughs> Must be awful. I wouldn't like it. But it was awesome. I got to be teammates with Sean Green. That was, that was pretty cool. That is amazing. Um, I, I, one one thing, thought that came up for me um, as, as we were watching the film, and there was a comment about how much ball players, especially when they're growing up, you know, as, as they're kids, you're just constantly playing. Um, for Personally, for me, one of the things that really helped cement uh, Jewish identity was being able to go to Jewish summer camp. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not always an option for a young person who is a very serious ball player. No. Well, you don't really get, you shouldn't really be getting all that serious until you're 13, 14 anyways. Those but are the best years. <laughs> those are. But when it comes to, I, I had the choice, uh, you know, of going to Hebrew school with my friends or playing more baseball. I made the very obvious choice. I loved playing. All I wanted to do was play baseball. So it was hard to find other hobbies that, that would you know, supplement myself if I wasn't playing baseball. I just kept playing baseball. Um, there was a little scene in the, a bit in the film, uh, the reporter from, I assume from Cuba, asking a question about the heritage exemption. Um, do you want to talk about that a little? I, I know, you know other teams take advantage of the heritage exemption as Every well. Every team takes advantage of that heritage rule. Yeah, you guys see Team Italy? Anthony Rizzo is from Florida. I hate to break the news to everyone. He's in first playing first base. Drew Butera, he's from Arizona. Let's be real clear. Every team has that thing. The, the heritage rule, keep in mind, we were a team of a bunch of guys who had very little big league time. I got, I got 10 at bats in the big leagues. I got one start. Um, I'm sad Charlie Steiner's not here because that one start was at Dodger Stadium and he called me Corey. <laughs> I was so excited to give him hell tonight. But um, the, uh, no, the heritage rule is just, it's the rule, it's the same with the Olympics. You can do the same exact thing in the Olympics as long as you can get citizenship. So it's, uh, that, was, that was just them trying to, you know, get out of the fact that they just got beat by a team named Israel and a bunch of, the Jewish American ball players that nobody wanted. Um, I mean, there is a history, of course, uh, of um, of disrespect towards uh, both teams and individual athletes uh, from the state of Israel. Um, one, certainly, one of the more famous examples being when uh, the Israeli basketball team played the team from the Soviet Union, and they refused to, uh, as documented in the film, on the map. I'm not sure how many people saw that, but. You know, uh, the Soviet Union team would not come to Israel. I don't even, as I recall, they wouldn't allow Team Israel to go to the Soviet Union. They had to play in a in a neutral uh, spot. Did you get any of that? Luckily, not at all. But then again, I didn't speak Korean or Japanese, so <laughs> maybe. I don't think so. Uh, we we were welcomed everywhere we went. We got along with every team we played with. It was it was honestly a great experience. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot of negative things to say about that experience. Everyone was so positive about it. Just it was funny how no one wanted to talk to us until we started winning. And it was great because we got to turn them away. That made us actually feel great. When did uh, you become aware of the fact that there was a documentary film? I know you've you're, you're, uh, seen on your Wikipedia page and elsewhere you're aware of media, um, interested in media. When did were you involved with the idea of having the documentary film made? Or? No, they told me. Um, the, the documentary kind of started a couple years ago. It was like a passion project of Jonathan Mayo, the baseball writer that was in the movie. And um, he never thought it was going to get off the ground. He never thought it was going to happen. And it just, every little detail. I mean, the whole idea was just about, supposed to be about Jewish baseball players finding their Judaism. That's not the movie. Uh, the movie turned into what it was, which was a really good baseball story about a team of misfits who no one wanted, who uh, went out and proved that you should probably want us. We're pretty good at this. Yeah, no, it's amazing. I mean, I think if I search through my emails from the end of 2016, um, when the team did win that qualify in the game in, in Brooklyn, and, and I literally emailed Neil Friedman from Anemsha Films, 
who was now distributing the film, and I was like, Neil, Team Israel made the World Baseball Classic. We got to who do, who do we get to make this movie? <laughs> Literally, you know, that we were all, it was already happening. It was, it was like, it, it was just been always in the works and uh, it was just a pure luck, one thing after the other that everything just kind of came together. No one would have predicted that. Like the, the, the director, Jeremy Newberg, even joked, uh, he, he, I spoke to him today and he even joked that, um, you know, I just booked a one-way ticket to Korea. I didn't expect to, come, one, be there for more than two days and three, to move on to Japan. We did. He didn't. Um, we knew we were going. We honestly knew we were going to win. There wasn't a single moment that we didn't think we were going to win. So wow. it was. Uh, it was a blast. That's great. And is Israel now automatically qualified? They are automatically qualified for the next WBC. Which All you have to do is win one game. Okay. And and that's is that going to be in uh, 2020 or because of the Olympics? 2021. Is it be 2021? Uh, the World Baseball Classic happens in spring training. That's why you don't get a whole lot of. Um, that's why our teams say we didn't have Jock. Jock was at the time kind of on the bubble of not making the uh, Dodgers that season. So he had to be in spring training. I was, on, I was new to an organization. And honestly, this cost, me, this cost me a job. I was with the Brewers. They didn't like that I went to this. And uh, they, they fired me shortly after I got back. It wasn't a big deal. I signed with the Mets like a week later. But it was, um, you know, it's kind of a daunting task to ask a guy to leave his team, especially if he's on the bubble of getting a job, to leave for up to a month and a half. You know, that's, that's a tough thing to do. That's just the way it is, though, uh, because that's when guys are prepared to play. After a full season, no guy really wants to go and play, you know, another month-long tournament. So it, it only works in spring training, but that also, you know, causes guys not to play. Yeah. Do you think recruitment will be a little easier next time around? Yeah. <laughs> yep, I've I've been reached out by every. I don't. I'm not. I haven't had nothing to do with the team. Like I don't. I don't recruit for the team. And more guys have reached out to me about being on the. Hey, I married a Jewish woman. Can I play? <laughs> and I'm like, first, why are you calling me? And two, yeah, you can. Come come and have fun. Congratulations on marrying a Jewish woman. <laughs>